Ladies and gentlemen, Demetrius Johnson. What's up, Demetrius? Good to see you. First off, how excited are you to take the show on the road and go to the United States? I'm super excited. Obviously, I've started my career in you know the U United States of America and be able to come back to it uh, this late in my career is amazing. So I'm very happy for the fans and the fans over in America to be able to get the opportunity to see me fight you know, once again. Abdullah is with us from Verdict MMA. Abdullah, go ahead with your question. Hey, Demetrius. You'll be fighting on home soil for the first time in a long time. Is that a better feeling than fighting abroad, or do you prefer that you get to travel the world as a part of your job? Um, I like what uh, I did. It goes both ways, right? I, I do enjoy fighting on home soil just because not a big time zone change, not long flights. And I actually also do enjoy traveling around the world, competing as a foreigner uh, in the beautiful world, the beautiful country of Asia. Thanks. Um, for me, what sets you apart from others in the, you know, quote unquote, greatest of all time conversation is the fact that you never stopped improving. You never relaxed and decided to stop growing. Obviously, excluding the early days when a fighter is absorbing knowledge like a sponge, in what phase of your career do you feel like you improved most and why? Hmm, that's an interesting question. I think to answer that is I feel like in my whole entire career, I've always been growing and just understanding my style and how is the best way for me to implement it, depending on the opponent I'm fighting. And obviously now people are seeing it more because I had I battled adversity when I fought Adriano Moraes the first time and then taking that fight against Rotang, you know, absolutely amazing fighter doing one round Muay Thai second round MMA and then coming out victorious in that one then going and fighting Adriano Moraes for the second time a lot of athletes when they suffer a huge defeat and get knocked out they get kind of gun shy but for me I think just my overall growth as a mixed martial artist and just getting better probably separates me different from the other, you know, people who on the list of the greatest of all time. Love the answer. Thank you so much. Can't wait to have you back in America. Hey. Next question is Jeffrey Hu from Kung Fu Kingdom. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Can we open the mic for Jeffrey, please? Jeffrey, you got to stop playing Gallagher. Oh, yeah. There you go. Good. Hey, Jeffrey. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I thought they unmuted for me. My bad. Um, so, um, yeah, as for um, your matchup with um, Adrian Morais, um, what kind of adjustments do you think he's going to make, and how are you going to prepare yourself for those adjustments? Yeah, I think the adjustment he's going to make, he's going to go back and watch the second fight and see where I was able to, you know, where I was beating him at, as you can say. <clears throat> and then for me, I'm just going to train. I'm just going to go out there and try to be uh, the best Demetrius Johnson I can be. You know, when we looked at the first fight against him, we saw, you know, a lot of things. And then we were able to, you know, execute on it on the second fight. And in the third fight, I plan on doing the exact same thing, just being in better shape, faster, stronger and take the fight to him. Even though I'm the champion, I'm always taking the fight to my opponents. I definitely look forward to, to the trilogy match. And um, yeah, another thing is, what is the key to your longevity? Key to longevity is just knowing when to train and when not to train. You know, I, the last time I've done any mixed martial arts training is Thanksgiving. So the last time I've been punched in the face has been by about, you know, two months. And I think that's probably what, you know, helps with my longevity and just my mental capacity being in mixed martial arts. I've been doing this since I was 18 years old. And I think sometimes taking these long breaks from combat prior to me uh, training in uh, November, I didn't spar from August to November. So that's a huge uh, time away from mixed martial arts, which I think is is warranted when you've been doing it as long as I have. Hmm. Most definitely. And so with that being said, good luck in your trilogy match. And thank you so much for your insight. Thank you. Cheers, Jeff. Pleasure, the next man. question comes from Kyle Segal from the Going Live Network. Go ahead, Kyle. Hey, Demetrius, um, love watching you fight every single time. 
with your last match with Adrian, I mean, we always knew your your striking was on that different level, but did that just give you that extra level of confidence? I mean, you've been doing it so long, but I mean, just to see you outclass him the way he is, and he's a really good striker. Yeah, I think my confidence came from when I fought Rod Tang. Uh, Rod Tang is probably one of the best strikers in the world, uh, the heaviest hitter under one championship's banner. And I think me fighting him kind of gave me back my confidence that, hey, I can stand and bang. And then obviously going back to the game plan and really trusting my coach's game plan uh, for this for that fight against Adriano. No, I definitely agree. And so if you beat Adriano again and it's in a dominant fashion, what's next for the Johnson legacy? I think after that, I'll be probably facing uh, Kyron Akhmatov, who I believe is the number one contender in the flyweight division. I mean, he's on a five-fight win streak, <clears throat> and me and him haven't locked horns yet. So I think it'll probably be him. But then after that, uh, we'll see what's next. Awesome. Thanks for taking the time, Demetrius. Absolutely. Next question comes from Stephen Fackman from Violent Money TV. Go ahead, Stephen. Hi, Demetrius. How you doing, man? Good, you? I'm good, thanks. Great to speak to you. Um, first of all, you were kind of the guest of honor at this card here. So how did you find the show? Oh, it was amazing. Um, amazing fights from start to finish. The Ong Law fight was amazing. Just the crowd. I think the crowd energy was more amazing than the fight itself, my personal opinion. Um, the Mikey Misumichi fight, uh, uh, Guttermar's resilience, his flexibility in his leg. Uh, that was absolutely amazing. And then that final fight against Chingez versus Superbond. Woo! Damn, Chingez blew the roof off tonight. Yeah, and you were doing a little bit of commentary as well. How did you find that? Oh, it was great. You know, I know Mitch and Rich, uh, Rich Frank will be trained together for, you know, in the past. And, you know, those guys are all knowledgeable. And I loved it. Just next, looking ahead to the trilogy, does the fact that you've been in there twice with Adriano already change the mindset or the preparation at all coming into this third one no not at all like i was saying earlier before i was answering questions we haven't started training for that fight you know regardless you know i've only done two training sessions of mixed martial arts since my last fight uh in august <clears throat> right now i'm just focusing on uh, getting better as an athlete with my jiu-jitsu and staying healthy and in shape and just one one more for me um looking further forward obviously there's a bunch of legalities regarding rule sets when it comes to expanding further around America. But one thing that makes sense, at least to me, is to headline a show in Seattle with you. Um, is that something that's been talked about at all? And how exciting would it be for you to be able to do that? Man, that'd be amazing if we could headline, uh, get a one championship come to Seattle. I think the fans in Seattle would absolutely love what one championship brings as a brand and uh, as an event itself with the kickboxing, Muay Thai, <clears throat> and mixed martial arts. I think they would absolutely love it. Uh, thanks for the time today, Demetrius. Best of luck with the trilogy. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to add on, DJ, you mentioned the Mikey Mutamechi fight. Uh, he's mentioned many times how much he respects you. What, what's the latest on the proposed grappling match between you guys? I know your dance card's full for the moment, but uh, where do you stand on that one? Yeah, I, I'm totally down to uh, grapple Mikey Mitsumichi. I mean, he's a wizard. I think I've, me and him probably grapple before we even grapple in the circle. Um, I told him, I was like, dude, once you grab my legs, I am tapping because I am not going to play that game and test my flexibility. I've, I've had tears on my LCL and MCL before just fighting in mixed martial arts because my knees are pretty tight. So, yeah, I, I'm totally down to do that, but I'm going to tap extremely fast. I don't, I don't have the resilience as that Kujumar did with my knees. We have a question coming in via text from Andrew Mack of MMA Island who asks, after this upcoming fight, three out of your last four will have been against Adriano. Will you be excited to fight fresh blood after this is all said? No. Absolutely. I think fighting fresh blood is always good. You know, I, I think it doesn't matter who I fight because I'm always going to go out there and bring the fight. You know, you look at all my fights in one championship or in my whole career, I've always brought the fight. You know, I want to fight Denny Keendad, Yuya Wakamatsu, uh, touch me to Wada, Adriano, Rod Tank. Doesn't matter who I fight; it's always gonna be exciting. So I know the fans are looking forward to this trilogy fight because you know we had one on one. But regardless, after fighting Adriano, we won't fight for a fourth time, and we'll get some fresh blood and get the fans what they want. Striking, grappling, MMA, gaming, and uh, rocking the mic tonight, DJ. Excellent stuff. Always good to see you. Thanks Thank a you. lot.